What up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. It's Demarius Jackson. So in today's video, I'm going to go over how I teach chord tone improvisation and how these techniques will help you address chord changes so your tunes will sound like tunes. So the next time you're improvising over a drum track, everyone will hopefully be able to tell what tune you're playing just by listening to you. So I know you're probably asking, what do you mean tunes sound like tunes? Honestly, the best way to describe that is for you to hear it. So here's a clip of me playing confirmation and not really addressing the chord changes. Take a listen. Oh. And now here's a clip of me utilizing chord tone improvisation. Here you go. So just to break it down, what chord tone improvisation does is that it allows you to play a tune without any accompaniment. Hopefully I said that right. Did I say that right? Word right? Accompaniment. Anyway, it allows you to play the tune without any accompaniment and hopefully you'll be able to hear the chord changes or at a minimum outline the chord changes for that tune. So a quick little story, when I was stationed in Virginia Beach, I was taking lessons from a very good saxophone player. He asked me to play over confirmation and I proceeded to do so. And when I got done, I thought I did a pretty good job, but honestly, he just turned around and told me, it sounds like you're just doodling over D major over the changes. And at first I was like, geez, dang, that was really mean. But then I realized I was paying him to help me get better and he was honestly right. So from there I set out on on a plan that consisted of three easy steps to help me get used to hearing chord changes and being able to outline them on my instrument. So without further ado, here are those three steps. Step number one, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Pretty please. No, but seriously, step one, outline the chords. So I know that sounds fairly simple and like, oh no crap, of course you need to outline the chords. But one of the things that holds people back and I hear it a lot of times in my improvisation when I'm stretching for something is that I lack the technical facility to actually play the things that I have in my mind. So I started with seventh chords. My first task was to outline major seventh chords. <laughs> And then from there I went to minor seventh chords. <laughs> And finally, dominant seventh chords. So it goes without saying, or I will say it, is that you should do this across the entire range of your instrument. Start off chromatically, and then maybe try to take it through the circle of fourths. And that leads me to step number two, which is pick a tune and memorize the changes. So back to that confirmation story, I had to do a little bit of soul searching or a lot of soul searching and come to grips with the fact that I didn't really know the changes to confirmation. I just heard it a bunch of times. I learned ahead and then I kind of faked it till I made it. So how do we go about learning the changes? Well, the first step that I did was very, very simple. All I learned and all I did was play the roots along with a play along, kind of like this. <laughs> So from 
from there, once I memorize the roots, I learn two tonalities at a time. So what I mean by that is I outlined a major tonality. That's the first one I picked in a dominant tonality. So whenever I had a major chord or a dominant chord, I would play that entire chord and then outline the rest. Hopefully that makes sense. Here's a clip of that. <laughs> And then from there, I just proceeded until I was able to outline entire chords. Now, what tripped me up a little bit in the beginning was trying to outline the entire seventh chord. So I honestly started with just one, three, and five. And then eventually you wanna add the seventh because that gives you a, a little bit more of the tonality of the actual chord. And that leads me to my final third step, which was rhythmic application. So this is the step where you can get really, really creative. All we're doing is taking the chord tones and making up rhythms and applying it to the correct chord. And here's the key for this one. You can play as little or as much as possible. I would start off with as little as possible and then try to make it a little bit more complex as you go along, whatever your imagination brings to you. Here's an example. <laughs> And so there you have it. I am almost 100% sure if you apply these tips and these three steps, you'll be able to confidently outline chord changes and hopefully get a little bit closer to hearing the chord changes and playing things that are appropriate, and we'll say appropriate, over those chord changes. One more thing that I will add though is get creative. So what I mean by that is don't always start on the root. Try out different inversions of these chords. So play three, five, seven, or five, seven, three, or five, seven, one, whatever it is, but don't always start on the root of the chord. And the second pro tip is add enclosures. So if you don't know what an enclosure is, I did another video on it. I'll probably make another video on it later, but start off with a, a half step below and a whole step above. We'll just say that. So if we're in D, half step below C sharp, whole step above E, and then you land on the one, and then you play the rest of the chord tones. Here's a little example of that. <laughs> you have it i hope you enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching please smash the like button comment and subscribe feel free to add me on instagram my handle is at demarius jackson music i'm always posting there daily or almost daily so if you want more go over there thanks again for watching and i'll see you on the next one out